This is Waves J37. It is a recreation of the Abbey Road J37, the legendary four track machine used in Abbey Road Studios, of course, uh, during the 60s and early 70s. This thing is what Sgt. Peppers was recorded on. So it is pretty special. And it, it makes me really excited to be able to get a little bit of that magic in my recordings. You can do a lot of stuff with it. You can use it for some very heavy lo-fi sounds or for just some basic mastering effects. So we're gonna take a look at what it does, how it sounds and how to use it. Right now I have it on the master track right at the end before my limiter. So let's listen at what it is doing right now. So obviously it's making the whole thing sound a little bit louder, but it's also coloring the sound a little bit. It's adding some weird harmonics, some higher frequencies. It makes the track sound a little bit brighter. It compresses the signal and it's also saturating it. So first we have the formula that basically means which tape we're using. You can see that the actual tape we're using changes up here. The first one is a recreation of the tape chemistry from the tapes used in the early 60s. That's going to give you a more lo-fi sound. 811 is the tape chemistry that they were using in the mid to late 60s, which means that that's probably what they were using in Sgt. Pepper's. And it's supposed to be more high fidelity. And the last one, 815, this is the one that they were using in the early 70s. It's supposed to be even more high fidelity, so it's going to have a very flat frequency response. It's the one that's going to be coloring the sound the least. So let's actually listen to the differences. I'm gonna go to the Abbey Road default to listen to them like that. Down here in the meters, I can see that we're at minus five and three dB. If you push it a little bit harder, it's going to affect the sound even more. So I'm going to have it in between minus three and zero. And try not to go past plus one because that's going to really distort the signal, unless that's what you want. That's what you don't want. Now we're going to change between the different formulas. They do sound a little bit different, but this is a very saturated track. So I'm going to only use the drums just to have something that sounds a little bit cleaner and just to be able to hear the differences a little bit better. So that one has a little bit more low end. It's a very slight difference, but they do get cleaner as you go. Now the speed of the tape actually makes a pretty big difference. It's measured in inches per second. It's going to make it a little bit darker if you go down in reps. So 7.5, it's going to have more low end and 15 is going to sound brighter. So, 
What is the tape machine actually doing to our track? It is basically saturating and compressing the signal. It's rounding off the transients so that it is compressed in a very specific way. The bias changes the response of the very extreme high harmonics. You can see that normal sounds a little bit darker. The model tracks are different versions of the tracks of the actual machine that they are using. You can select either one of those, but if you are in stereo and you select two plus three, it's using one for each side of the stereo image, and that's going to affect each channel differently and therefore make it sound wider. Again, those are very slight differences, but two and three sound a little bit more mono and two plus three sounds a little bit bigger. It all depends on what you're going for. I want something that's a little bit more hi-fi here, so I'm going to select two plus three. But for example, if I wanted to go for something that's more lo-fi, I would select maybe 7.5, 888, and one of these, and that's going to sound pretty lo-fi. that's really beating the crap out of the track. Let me just turn up this saturation plugin so that we have a little bit more of a clean sound to work with. Now, these are a little bit more extreme. So the wow filter is going to affect the frequency and that's due to differences in the speed of the machine due to the motors being a physical thing that's spinning. So part of the sound is very slight differences in the pitch. You can really go crazy with it. Let's go back to normal. Flutter is the same, but instead of the pitch is the volume. And noise level is noise. And that's a very real analog sounding noise. It's pretty cool. And saturation is for even more saturation. For example, I would really use it on for like this synth. It's at J37. I'm gonna do a factory, a full reset. Now let's use the delay function. So I'm going to turn up the delay that I'm already using for that synthesizer. And I'm going to use the slapback that's built into the J37. So I'm going to sync with my track and I'm going to use eight notes. So let's go for fourths. You can add a high pass. 
<laughs> that sounds pretty cool. It's only adding a high pass to the delay. Or a low pass. Let's cut some highs and some lows. Pretty cool. You can change the feedback. And it actually goes forever. So for feedback, the level adjusts the volume and the feedback. The way I'm using it here is very simple. And my master bus have a little bit of reverb, a little bit of EQ, have the little tube, and the J37. And let's do something like a mastering um, high frequency. No, let's go for tight and open. There's no one quite it actually clipped a little bit. But it's pretty easy to hear how it's affecting the sound. It is making it a little bit louder, but it's adding some very nice saturation and higher frequencies to it. You can use it as a compressor, you can use it as a saturation plugin, you can use it as a delay, you can use it just to add noise. It's kind of a must have for anyone who does anything that's in the lo-fi genre. Or if you make more vintage style music, this is definitely going to help you get that sound. If you're interested in the Waves J37, click the link down in the description to check it out. Thank you for watching, I'll see you next time.